What's up my friend, Abby here, and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays, where we come together to help you make your story matter and make your author dreams come true. Do you feel like you never have time to write? Like all the time you set aside for writing is always disrupted by someone or something demanding your attention? Do you feel overwhelmed when you look at your schedule and see your writing time get pushed off the table again and again and again? I feel your pain. As a solopreneur who runs her own full-time business, I completely understand the struggle of finding writing time. It's not easy when your schedule is packed with work or school or basic adult responsibilities. Sometimes I long for those middle school days when all I had to do was drink Capri Sun and write fan fiction. But it's okay, we can still find writing time, even in the midst of chaos. In this video, I am going to share with you some life-saving techniques that I have learned over the years that will help you not only to make time for writing, but also to show up with more creativity and better ideas. Ready to transform your writing life? Roll that intro and let's get started. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. First things first, I want you to take a deep breath and close your eyes and block out all the voices and external sources that influence you. And just turn your focus inward for a moment to ask yourself, why? do I desire to spend more time writing? And I say it like that because you're going to hear a lot of writing advice like, write consistently every day. The only way you're going to improve as a writer is if you spend a lot of time writing. And yes, that's true. Like you can improve at almost anything if you spend a lot of time doing it. Whether it's learning a new language, playing the violin, practicing karate, you get better at something faster the more often you do it. But that might not harmonize with your unique lifestyle. And you know what? That's okay. Just because you can't do something every day doesn't mean you should throw in the towel and be like, oh, well, pff, I can't do that every single day. I can't do it consistently, so I just should not even do it at all. I don't have time to take this seriously. Well, maybe you should stop taking it so seriously. <laughs> maybe you would find more joy and creativity in your art if you just took the pressure off and enjoyed doing what you can do with it. I don't know about you, but I would rather be an enthusiastic amateur than a miserable master. In fact, there's nothing wrong with being an amateur. Did you know that word comes from the Latin amateur, meaning lover? When did it start being shameful <laughs> to do something just for the sake of loving it? I'm going to tell you how to make more time for writing in just a minute, but I wanted to address this first because I think it's really important to know why you want to spend more time writing. Is it because you love it and you're obsessed with it and you are bursting with so many ideas and so much creativity that you feel like your head's gonna explode if you don't have time to sit down and write? Or is it because you're like, I need to practice more, I need to write more, I need to get better, I need to be more dedicated and serious like these authors that I look up to? Just some food for thought, something to meditate on. I guarantee that you will end up happier in the long run if you do it for the passion and not for the profession. Not saying you can't be a professional author, of course you can. And if you want that for your life, you should pursue that. But use other authors as inspiration, not as a barometer for how successful or good you are. Okay, now let's talk about actually making time to write. Number one, find your free time. Abby, you don't get it. I don't have any free time. Aha. Hold on a minute. <laughs> I think you do. I think you just don't know how much free time you have. 
I used to think I didn't have any free time because I would wake up every morning to a monster to-do list and just start working my way through that to-do list all day long, filling every spare moment of my day with work and then repeating the same process the next day. My to-do list never stopped growing because I never prioritized one task over another. And I felt like I was running just to keep up. If this sounds familiar, you need to start managing your time better. Take a step back and try to objectively assess what things in your life are priorities and give those vital few things your best attention. As for the rest of it, maybe you don't need to be doing it all yourself. Maybe you can delegate or share some tasks with someone else. Maybe you can put a less important project on the back burner for this season of life so that you can make more time to write. Calendar blocking is a fantastic way to see how much time you actually have in your schedule. Once you have blocked in your non-negotiable tasks for the week, you can look at what space you have left over in your schedule and you can choose ahead of time what you're going to spend those free hours on. Maybe it's just one hour a day or maybe you can move some tasks from one day to another day and do a little bit of extra work earlier in the week so that you have more time later in the week for writing. Whatever you end up choosing, once you make that decision, don't call it free time. Block it in as writing time. Dedicate it to your art. This is important to you. And if you really feel like you don't have any free time, if every single block of space is taken up in your schedule, let me ask you, do you spend any time scrolling through social media? Do you spend any time reading or watching the news? Do you spend any time commuting on a train or a subway or even standing in line for something for an extended period of time? You'd be surprised by how much time all these little things equate to. And guess what? That's all time that you can spend writing. Technique number two, write when you're not writing. As in, think about your story constantly. Immerse yourself in the world of your characters and their internal conflicts and their struggles and their feelings and their actions. I do this all the time. And what it does is it keeps my story and my ideas fresh and it keeps the creativity flowing. It also gives me lots of new ideas. If you wait until you actually have time to write, to pause and dive into the world of your story, you're going to have a lot more catching up to do. But if you take the time when you are doing other mindless tasks to think about your story, immerse yourself in that world and those characters, you're going to find that you're far more creative and equipped with new brilliant ideas when you actually sit down to write. This technique also helps me to keep my story fresh in my mind even if I go weeks without writing it. Keeping in touch with the characters, their struggles, and the overall premise of the story, it will help you to keep it alive in your imagination and you never know when a great idea will strike you. I also talk to myself a lot. <laughs> I do, I literally talk to myself about my stories, about my characters, um, go through dialogue, go through different plot ideas, go through different plot options and things that can happen in the story. And maybe I'm getting ready, maybe I'm going for a walk or stretching or working out or something, doing something that I don't have to think about it. And I'm thinking about my story the whole time and maybe I'm even talking to myself about it and going through different ideas and different options for where the story could go or how my characters are going to respond to a certain event. This is all part of writing. It's all part of the creative process. So it doesn't have to just happen when you're sitting at your computer typing, okay? This can happen anytime. And for me, I get some of my best ideas when I'm doing this part of the creative process in the midst of something else, okay? Because it's like that free flow of creative thought. I'm not sitting at my computer waiting for the idea to hit me, right? It's something I'm constantly engaging with in my imagination. And last but not least, technique number three, say no to other things so that you can say yes to writing. Time for some brutal honesty. <laughs> Is there anything that you do throughout your daily life that you don't actually need to be doing? I know it sounds kind of harsh, but if you're serious about writing and you want to make more time for writing, 
you kind of got to be harsh with yourself about your time and where you are spending your time. Examine your commitments and obligations, all the things that you say yes to, and ask yourself, what would happen if I said no? Chances are the world would not come to an end. I know a lot of times our default response is yes, we want to be obliging, we want to be helpful, we want to commit to a lot of things. I know, I'm, I'm a person who commits to a lot of things. A lot of times, way more than I can actually manage in my schedule. But I have realized over the years that in order to protect your creative time, in order to protect your writing time, you need to set boundaries. And just like I was saying earlier about finding that free time in your schedule and then dedicating it to writing, actually blocking it out, actually scheduling a block of time where this is my writing time, it's no longer free time. It is time dedicated to your art. And if you have other people in your life who tend to interrupt that free time, try to have a compassionate, communicative discussion with them about why this time matters so much to you and why your writing matters to you and why you need this time to yourself, to your creativity. I'm sure they'll understand. A lot of times we default to looking at obligations and commitments as these are stumbling blocks, these are obstacles in my path, these are things that are holding me back, but we don't often take one more step back and ask ourselves, well, how did those obstacles even get in the way? Is it something that you actually put there? Is it something that you said yes to and now it's an obstacle in your way, but because there is a different identity attached to the obstacle, now we can kind of think that it's this external thing affecting our creative life. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not as out of your control as you think. Maybe you can reassess it and say no to it. Even if just for a season of life, this doesn't have to be forever, you know? It can be just for a season of life or just for this year or however much time you need to devote to your art. What would happen if you put that on hold or put that on the back burner? It might even be one of your own projects. It might not be somebody else that you feel obligated to. It might be yourself that you feel obligated to, to work on a certain project or side hustle. This would be a good time to re-examine whether or not you should be focusing your attention and your time on this project at this time. Can you rearrange your commitments and actually find more joy? Okay, boom, that's it. That is my best advice on finding time for writing. It's not easy, it takes patience, it takes commitment, dedication, but most of all, it takes passion. It is a labor of love, okay? And that's why I started this video by talking about your why, your reason, why you feel this desire to make more time to write. I hope it's for the passion. I hope it's for the love of the thing. Don't be afraid to be an enthusiastic amateur. So I hope this video helped you. I hope that you will find more time to write and I hope that you will find joy and creativity in the process. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos every Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Also be sure to check out my Patreon because that's where we go beyond videos and take storytelling to the next level. The Patreon community is not only the best way to support what I'm doing here on YouTube, but it's also the only way to get exclusive content like monthly live trainings and a private Discord server to chat with writers in the Writer's Life Wednesday community. I hope to see you over there. Until next week, my friend, rock on. To me, it's like you can have two different perspectives on life. You can either be looking at things competitively or compassionately. And like, I love that. They're like, they're, I love that. They're like two different attitudes to have. And, and you find that competitive people aren't very happy. <laughs>